Picture class, let's look at this problem from section 4.2. And what they're wanting us to do is find all the six trig functions here. So let's start off with um, the uh, just the definition, sine, cosine, tangent. Remember, x, y is the point coordinates. Cosine is the x coordinate. Uh, sine is y. So the sine of t, and they're calling this angle t here, uh, that's the angle all the way around. So the sine of t is the y coordinate. So that's the negative 3 square root of 13 over 13. All right. Cosine is the x coordinate. So 2 square root of 13 over 13. That's the one you can always get just by looking at the point coordinate are those two. So I'm going to pull this down here and plug in those two values. So uh, fraction, negative 3, there's the square root button, 13. Okay, so there's our sine, and then for cosine, we'll get the x coordinate there. All right, and now what we have to do is remember that the rest have to do with sine and cosine, but they are, um, we have to do a little bit of math. So the next one they want is tangent. Tangent is sine divided by cosine. So that's going to be uh, this this one right here, negative 3 square root of 13 over 13 divided by this one. Now when I divide, I'm going to flip that and multiply. So I'm going to put the 13 on the top and that 2 radical 13 on the bottom. I don't know why it's saying this red pen. Um, okay, and so what's going to happen here is the 13s are going to cancel. The square root of 13s are going to cancel, and I end up with negative three halves. So there is my third one, and you know the, the first one that I actually had to do a little bit of math to come up with. So negative three divided by. All right, and now they want the cosecant. So the way that this is going to go from here is they're going to ask for the reciprocals of these, because remember, see, uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, Secant is reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is reciprocal of tangent. So if I flip over uh, the sine function, I'll get cosecant, and I flip this over, well, initially I'm going to get negative 3, or sorry, negative 13 over 3 square root of 13. Okay, but just like before, this is not rationalized. And so the way we rationalize this thing is to get rid of the irrational, we need to multiply by another square root of 13. Okay, and so what's going to happen here with cosecant is on top we're going to have a negative and a 13 times the square root of 13 initially. But watch what happens here. The um, square root of 13 times itself is 13. And then there's this 3 down here. Now I can multiply that out and get a 39, but I'm going to just cancel those 13s. And so what we end up with here is the cosecant is equal to negative square root of 13. All right, so I'm going to bring this down here again. I got negative square root of 13. Let me do a fraction. Oops, not a mixed number. A fraction negative. So up top, I got square root of 13. And then on the bottom. All right, now they want the secant. Again, that's just the reciprocal of the uh, cosine. So I'm going to take the cosine function and do the same thing that I did uh, with the sine for the cosecant. For secant, do it over here to give me some room. That's going to be the reciprocal of this. Well, I'll have a 13 on the top and a 2 times the square root of 13 on the bottom. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did here. I'm going to put a square root of 13 on the top and the bottom. All right, these two together are going to be 13. All right, so these will cancel with that 13. All right, and I'm going to be left with the secant is equal to the square root of 13 halves. All right, and notice secant because cosine is positive, secant is going to be positive. So let me pull that down. All right, so there's the square root of 13 halves. All right, and then finally, cotangent. This one's the easy one because tangent was didn't have any radicals, so uh, cotangent won't either. So it'll just be negative two thirds if I flip that around. 
So I got a negative fraction, two on the top, three on the bottom, and there's the cotangent. So that's how you do that. When you have the radicals and you flip them over, you have to rationalize. The thing is to rationalize fractions that have numbers multiplied by the uh, irrationals, you just don't worry about those numbers. You just multiply uh, by that same error, if it's square roots, that is, you know, if it's square roots times a number, you just multiply by the square root again. You're basically, you're creating the square to get rid of the radical down that goes down the denominator when you flip these over. 